ladies and gentlemen, Dean Martin. Long to be in a little brown shack in South Carolina. Someone waits for me. In each letter she says the weather's fine, the folks are great, and the garden looks grand, the red rose vine is clinging to the gate. For just a little bit south of the North Carolina is where my thoughts all stray. To the one I love best in South Carolina Going back someday I can hardly wait to see the face The one I, I like Just a little bit south of North Carolina I'll find Face of the one I idolize Just a little bit south of North Carolina I'll find paradise All of the NBC gang is there Chatting away as they clip your hair Down at the bar Shave and a haircut. That'll be three dollars and fifty cents. Three fifty? It was only two fifty last week. Yeah, but prices have gone up. Did you know that if we accidentally cut you, we gotta charge you for the band-aids? Oh, uh, after your haircut, I'm gonna put on all over your hair toothpaste. It's wonderful. Toothpaste on my hair? Yes! You crazy? I'm not crazy. Have you ever seen a guy with dandruff on his teeth? <laughs> Yeah, but wait a minute. On the other hand, my hair doesn't have cavities either. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what you reading, Nipsey? The financial page, huh? Yes, I am. This paper cost me a dime to find out my stocks ain't worth a nickel. Oh. <laughs> you know, when I joined the war on poverty, I never thought I'd be losing this bad. I'll give you a tip. You better. <laughs> You get it? I got it. Okay. Now, look, you want to invest in something that's always going up, put your money in taxes. That's... <laughs> you know, it's very easy to make money in this country if you know how. Huh? I know an immigrant who came here penniless. Yeah. He is now worth a fortune, and he only learned three words in English. What were the three words? Stick them up. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I, I can't save anything. I tell you, my wife spends money like it's water. You're very lucky. My wife spends it like it was money. <laughs> my Uncle George can save money. Huh? Oh, he could hold a dollar bill until George Washington looked like Booker T. <laughs> <laughs> he, he used to say, money can't buy everything, but let's not be confused. The things that money cannot buy are very seldom used. Right. I say, if you got it, spend it. You can't take it with you. Right? Uh, I'm not worried about taking it with you. I want to have it while I'm here. Uh -huh. Do you remember when years ago, $20 worth of groceries, you could fill up the trunk of your car? Yeah. Right. Now you can't even stick it in your glove compartment. <laughs> now, the problem today is they're making spending money too easy. Yeah. It's the credit card system. Oh, yeah. Now, I know a fella didn't have a dime. So he gets himself a credit card. He flies to Europe, first class. Mm. He goes to London, Paris, Rome, the finest restaurant, wow. bought clothes, rented cars. Now, that was six months ago. He's still over there. That's incredible. When is he coming back? When they stop looking for him. <laughs> hey, talking about credit cards, you know, last month, some guy stole my wife's credit card. Oh, no. I haven't reported it yet. Wait, why not? So far, he's spending a lot less than she did. Oh! <laughs> My wife and I, we try to put a little money in the bank. Every week, boom, in the bank. That's, uh, my wife and I have joint bank accounts. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Joint bank accounts? Yeah. Deposit slips for me and withdrawal slips for her. 
The things that uh, kills me, I can't pass up a bargain, you see. Uh -huh. Now, last week, I bought a suit I didn't need yeah. to take out a girl I don't like to a party I wasn't invited to, uh -huh. and the whole thing cost me $100, which I ain't got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, hey, Dean! Oh, how are you doing? It's good to see you again. Good to be here. Oh, how are you, Dean? We just invented, uh, Nipsey and I just invented a fantastic dandruff tonic. It's wonderful. It's mm. yellow, blue, and green. Mm, does it work? No, it doesn't really work. You still have dandruff, but it looks like confetti. <laughs> <laughs> cut my hair and cut the last joke. You got it. Okay. Well, how about dressing your hair, Dean? No, my hair is old enough to dress itself. <laughs> hey, we were just talking. <clears throat> we were talking about the cost of living, mm -hmm. how expensive everything is these days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're telling me the other night I broke down on the road. Yeah. A Did guy you? charged me $60 to tow me home, and I didn't even have a car. <laughs> <laughs> That's upsetting. You know, we'll... <laughs> you know what they say, chicken or not? Money is the root of all evil. Yeah, yeah and we're, we're all, all in their root. <laughs> It's money the root of all evil, but if money is evil, one day I want to be the evilest man on this planet. <laughs> They're even taxing now to the extent there's a federal tax on whiskey. Ah, that's why I drink. I'm patriotic. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something. Everything is going up, up, up. Oh. You know why? Because I went to buy a birthday gift to my niece the other day. The salesman shows me a doll. It's a beautiful doll, but it costs $100. I believe it. A friend of mine was out with one last night. Hey! <laughs> This one was wooden. This one had a fixed smile. This one didn't even talk. It just stood there like a dummy. So did my friend. Uh, <laughs> you know, even the prices of movies are going up. Do you know something? There's a new Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor moving, and they are charging $4. Let me get this for you, Dean. They are, they're charging $4 for the movie. $4 a ticket. That's $8 for two people to see a movie. And the only two people who can afford that are Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> Last month, I took my nephew to see it. Wasn't it last movie. Sunday? No, it was last Yes, Sunday. it was last Sunday, Sunday, but it felt like last Wednesday. <laughs> right. Anyway, so I took him to this terrific movie, The Great Waltz. <laughs> it's a story of Johann Strauss, the composer, you know, yeah. with Horace Buchholst and uh, Mary Costa and uh, Rosanna Brazzi. Yeah. And anyway, uh, you know, I bought one of these um, uh, tubs of uh, popcorn. Look at my lips, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I'm, my brain is so confused now, I don't know what the heck is happening. <laughs> Of popcorn, <laughs> it's 50 cents for the tub of popcorn. Yeah. That's just the tub, the popcorn is extra. <laughs> and another thing is, I can't even save for taxes. That infernal <laughs> revenue sent me a form. Yeah. To fill out and want me to guess how much I'll make next year. And what'd you do? I filled it out, sent it back to them, but I didn't sign it. Why didn't you if sign it? If I'm gonna have to guess how much I'll make, let them guess who sent it. <laughs> <laughs> Starring Danny Thomas, Kay Medford, Lou Jacoby, Tom DeLuise, Rodney Dangerfield, Nipsey Russell, Charo, and the Dingaling. In an effort to combat the growing nationwide shortage of doctors, many medical schools are attempting to speed up and condense their courses. If this trend continues, doctors will be graduating with less and less training. Nurse, is aspirin spelled with an I-N or E-N? I-N. Uh, well, here, I want my patient at 9 or 5 to have that every three hours. Yes, Dr. Hornby. Fine. By the way, Mrs. Swenson called and she's quite annoyed with you. Why? I got that piece of glass out of her eye. Yes, but it was her contact lens. <laughs> What are you going to do with your patient in room 253? He has a temperature of 104. 104? Eh? Yeah, that's a problem. Why don't you put him in a bed with my patient? He has the chills. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Mr. Baker. You'll be fine. Uh, don't charge Mr. Baker for that appendectomy. Oh! oh. <laughs> You're not charging him? Is he a welfare patient? No, I was supposed to take out his tonsils. <laughs> Well, how come you took out his appendix? Who knows? I think they turned the table around. <laughs> you no, 
tell me, uh, he seems to be uh, in a lot of pain. Why don't you give him a shot in the buttocks? Buttocks? <laughs> yeah, the tush tush. Oh, that. Oh, oh. I'll catch him later. Say, oh. doctor, do you make a practice of giving your patients a uh, cardiograph? No, certainly not. When my patient leaves the office, he gets a lollipop, and that's it. <laughs> I know you're busy, but could you take a look at me? I feel just awful. This is hardly the time, but sit down, sit down. Here, uh, let, let me check your reflexes. Oh. What's he hollering about? Don't you, don't you do that with your patients? Yeah, but I use a rubber hammer. Oh. <laughs> Listen, let's have a look in his ears. Can you give me a hand here, okay. doctor? Oh, there's a definite stoppage, Doctor. I can't see you at all. I do like a pussycat, a pretty big pussycat to hold. Gets no respect, Rodney Dangerfield. Good crowd, good crowd. I tell you that. I tell you, I'm all right now. You know, the Seth Luna's in rough shape. You know, I mean, it's my wife. She keeps taking me places I don't want to go. And the Seth Luna took me to a place to eat, the Ye Old Coffee Shoppy. I said to the waitress, "You know what I want, Dee?" <laughs> After I left the old coffee shop, I went for a checkup. I had to see the family doctor. That's another beauty, my family doctor. He told me I need exercise in the right climate. Then he told me to run to Arizona. <laughs> another thing he told me, I'm putting on weight. I told him, I said, do me a favor, don't remind me, will you? I tell you, with me, every day is a battle not to gain weight. I can't help it. I come from people who love to eat, you know? I remember when I was a kid in school. My lunch weighed more than my books. <laughs> I mean, I never knew from peanut butter and white bread. I used to eat a hero sandwich with hot peppers and the other hand a salami. I was to eat, you know. And walking home from school, I'd stop at the corner, have three frankfurters and the old man with the orange umbrella. Then when I got home, I'd have a quart of chocolate milk with four boxes of marshmallows and two dozen Twinkies. I mean, in my house, we never knew from seconds. There was nine, tens we used to eat. When you get older, you gotta watch your weight. No more Franks from the old man. No more marshmallows. No more... Twinkies. I'll be all right. Oh, when I was a kid, where I come from, you had to eat. I mean, you had to be big. Every day there was a fight, and you had to fight. Even if you didn't want to fight. You had to fight, you got out of the fight. And sometimes we used to bet in a fight. If the guy we bet on lost, then we beat him up. Well, I come from my block, no one cared about weight. On my block, you kid, the most important thing was to be able to take it. And I remember guys in my block. I remember the guys who could take it. Guys like Moose. Ox, bull, the bear. I mean, these guys were animals. But when they had a fight, they could take it. And they never complained. They were always all right. No, I'm all right. I'm all right. Ooh, that guy, get out of there. You mean when he drove the car into me? Nah, I'm all right. No. It was a light car. It don't mean nothing. Know what I mean? Oh, my team, my team, they're all right. They had to come out anyway. No, I'm all right. I mean, I wasn't looking for no fight, you know. It started when he banged my wrist with a pipe. I tried to stop him, grabbed his pipe and my wrench. Then he got me mad, he took the pliers, he pulled my ear. Oh, I told him tomorrow we're gonna fight again, you know. Only tomorrow. No rules. <laughs> Even a great crowd. Thanks for dropping in. Okay, folks, I'll see you again. I'm always around. I'm fine, but you must be tired, you know? That was a very tough fight. Oh, a very tough fight. In fact, I'm so tired, I, I think I'll have a... Oh, look, hold it. I know just what you want, E. A drinky. <laughs> You're right, E. Uh, Teddy, the usual, a Shirley Temple, extra sugar, okay? I'll tell you, Dean, you should have been here the other night. We had a guest star come in here. Oh, the guy was great. What a voice, I'm telling you. Dude, this guy, he sang, he sang Mala Femina. Know that song? Oh. 
He was great. I tell you, what a song that is too, you know? It goes, Femina, Duzina, Malavemina. John Rebecca, the guy's name was, was he great? What a song. This guy, I tell you, he sang Malavemina. He moved me so much. I went out, I ate a whole pizza pie. <laughs> I mean, I played with anchovies, meatballs, everything, the whole works. This guy was really, really great, you know. But I tell you, you know, you, you know as well as I, you work in nightclubs, you've got to be careful. You've got to say the right thing, you know. Otherwise, people, they, they get mad. And you say the wrong thing, and it's, it's wrong. I remember one night I, I said the wrong thing, you know. I, I told an ethnic joke. Ethnic yeah, joke. the next day I got six letters from ethnics. Tell <laughs> <laughs> me, Dean, did you ever get a letter from an ethnic? Yeah, I just one. It was years ago. Shirley Ethnic. Oh. <laughs> No, I tell you, you gotta be careful on that, because you can't figure people out. I tell you, I can't figure guys out, you know? Like guys, like a guy will steal another guy's girl, but he won't take his last cigarette. <laughs> I can't figure people out at all. I tell you, a lot of people, you know, they're still single today. You know why? They don't respect each other. You gotta give each other respect. Like, people think they're better than everyone else, you know? Like, I hear people talk to say, oh, she thinks she's too good for him, he thinks she's too good for her. I'll tell you, when someone thinks they're too good for someone else, they just do what I do. I just take a good look at myself in a mirror in my shorts. <laughs> well, I don't think I'm good enough for anyone. I'll tell you the truth. Recently, scientists have succeeded in creating life in a test tube. This could mean that someday women won't have babies anymore. Science will do it all. Ordering a baby will be just as simple as ordering lunch. Yes, yes, monsieur. Please, please come right down. We're expecting you. Ah, that's so wonderful. Can I help you, monsieur? Yeah, my friend and I, we want to have a baby. Oh, well, it's a little <laughs> irregular, you know. We usually serve married couples. Indeed. Are you two uh, married? Of course not. I'm Catholic and he's Jewish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't understand. I mean, why would two men want to have a baby? Well, you see, we thought it would be nice for a change if a kid grew up wondering who his mother was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, won't you please uh, walk this way? Okay. <laughs> All right. And here you are. I'll be back to take your order in one moment. Okie dokie. I'm so glad we came here. It's such a nice atmosphere. And it's not all that expensive. Look, you can have a whole baby for just 50 bucks. Yeah, including labor. <laughs> Should have walked slower. <laughs> can I take your order now? Yeah, I think so. What would, I, what would you recommend? Well, I'll tell you, the triplets are very nice today. No, the triplets. I had them the other day. Kept me up all night. All right. <laughs> this is kind of nice. Uh, blonde hair, blue eyes, and dimples. Uh, could we have that with red hair? No, I'm sorry. No substitutions. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Maybe we should order a la carte. A la carte's nice. That's a very good idea. A la carte's nice? Oh, sure. <laughs> That's terrific. Here, let me sharpen this. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you order for us? Right. Why don't you leave it to me? I'll have a lovely baby for you in just a few minutes. Good job. Ah, boy. Just think. How exciting. I'm gonna be a father. Yeah, and I'm gonna be a father, too. Then have a, a cigar. cigar. Yes. Oh, <laughs> what? Baby coming through? Voila, monsieur, your baby. Oh, it's beautiful. Waiter. There's a fly on my baby. That should more. It's a boy. Oh, there. Ah, that's a fine-looking seal you've got there. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> her, uh, her name is Raquel. Oh, why do you call her Raquel? Well, just look at her flippers. Oh. <laughs> Did you know that the male seal sometimes has as many as 300 wives? Yeah, no wonder they're always applauding. <laughs> Can, can you, uh, can your seal balance a ball on her nose? <laughs> no, but I can. 
That's a healthy-looking animal you've got there, too. Is she much trouble? No, except since I got Kitty, all the tomcats in the neighborhood howl outside my window at night, but I solved that problem. Huh? I threw my wife's shoes at him, and in fact, that solved all my problems. Oh, yeah? Come. My wife was still wearing them at the time. <laughs> Shadow, you know, it's Hi. real treat having you on the show. Thank you. Mm, I'm sorry. Have you ever met Mr. Danny Thomas? No, I haven't. How do you do? How do I do what? <laughs> no, Shadow, no, no, no. That's just a way of greeting people like, how's every little thing? Oh, I don't know. I never had any. <laughs> you know, Dino, you American men all talk funny. We do? Yes. Yes. You want to hear something? You too? Yes, yeah, too. Yesterday, I was in the park, and a man came over to me and said that I was an animal. <laughs> that was just wishful thinking. <laughs> he said you were an animal? He said that. He, he kept calling me pussycat. 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 Oh, that's just a figure of speech. He didn't really think you were a cat. Oh, yes, he did. I know that. How do you know? <laughs> oh, Gucci, I'm glad you asked me that question because he told me his wife was a dog. Wow, <laughs> wow! <laughs> and after he said a strange thing, like, a, how about a little petting? How about a little petting? <laughs> a, li a little petting. Oh, oh, that. Uh, you what? got it? Yeah, I got it. Well, what, what, what did you tell him? I told him if he likes petting, why he doesn't go back to his wife, the dog. <laughs> It's why the dog? You know, Dean, I think Charlie could use a little help with her English. Yeah, we've got to start right okay, from letter A, okay. huh? Oh. You're adorable. You're so beautiful. You're a cutie for a charm. You're a darling. You're exciting. You're a feather in my arm. Now, here's a tough one, but I know you can do it, Charlie, okay? Listen. Yes. H A double R R G A N spell Hariga. Hariga. Very good. Let's go for some big words, shall we? I you think know. you can handle a big one? I can, yeah. You can. Okay, Charo. Dean and I are going to demonstrate for you, all right? Now, when the porter yells, Massachusetts, I'll be there with Belle. Massachusetts, home she cares can be. Massachusetts, only place for me. Massachusetts! I know a dark, secluded place. A place where no one knows your face. That's a wild, a soft embrace. It's called Hernando's Highway.
and Nipsey Russell drove up to Las Vegas to play a benefit. On the way up, we had a frightening experience. A sandstorm came up and we got lost in the desert. Hey, the winds finally stopped. Yeah. Boy, you and your shortcuts. We've been stuck in this desert for two days and haven't found us yet. Hey, what? They're talking about us on the radio. What are you saying? They just sent out a searching party last night to find us. Yeah. Today they sent out a second searching party. Huh? To look for the first searching party. Oh. <laughs> well, let's face it, we got nothing to worry about. Because no matter where Americans are in the world today, sooner or later, Bob Hope will be along to entertain them. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever thought I'd die in the sands. Why not? You died in the flamingo and a few other <laughs> Sure don't. It shouldn't be too difficult to figure out. Look, we left Los Angeles exactly at midnight, right? Right. Then, then, then we drove at an average speed of 65 miles an hour for about 90 minutes, right? Indeed. Then we took a shortcut, and when the storm came up, we reduced our speed to 20 miles an hour for another 30 minutes. We had to. You're talking to a Phoenician, pal. We invented the compass. So figure it out. We drove a total of 108 miles in a southeastern direction, right? Southeast. According to my calculations, we should be right here. <laughs> Well, that certainly puts my mind at ease. I thought we were lost. Lost? We're in the desert. We can't see nothing. We don't hear nothing. We're lost, man. We haven't got a chance. We haven't got a chance. We haven't got a chance. I think he's cracking. <laughs> Not too well, either. <laughs> you did a much better rehearsal. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta do something on this desert, son. I don't need no suntan. No, I don't. <laughs> Vultures. Vultures, where? Vultures, where? Where's vultures? Vultures, where? right there, look. What do they want with us? I don't know, but I think they wear a napkin. <laughs> I hope they don't like dark meat. No. <laughs> if they're colorblind, you're in big trouble. <laughs> I don't know. We haven't got a chance. They ain't gonna find us. We can't get out of here alive. We haven't got a chance. Relax, me. Soft by now, when death with calloused hands is about to grasp, 
Know then whatever cheerful and serene supports the mind, supports the body too. Hence hope is the lifeblood of the soul. What is that? <laughs> Richard Burton did that in a war movie once. <laughs> I never, I never get the breaks all my life. It's been uphill, up everything the hard way. What did I do to deserve this? What, Nipsey? What? I don't know what you did. I can think of a couple of things. Oh, look, what are we making jokes like this for? It's no use. The blazing sun and the scorching sands are gonna get us. More! It's... Hey, it's Mike Connors! Mike, what are you doing out here in the middle of the desert? What desert? This is the Riviera Country Club golf course. You're in a sand trap. <laughs> One of the most famous lines to come out of motion pictures was when Humphrey Bogart said, play it again, Sham. And this is the song that inspired it. You must remember this. A kiss is still a kiss. A sigh is just a sigh. still say I love you on that you can rely no matter what the future brings as time moves love songs never out of date Hearts full of passion, jealousy, and hate. Woman needs man, and man must have his mate. But no one can deny. It's still the same old story. A fight for love and glory. A case of do or die. down or the dance that's a dream of romance or the scene 
where the villain is mean That sends a tan band The lights on the lady in tight Or the bride with the guy on the side Or the ball where she gives him her all That's entertainment Another one gets the measles, then all of us get the measles and bumps and poop. Oh, I wish I had a gun, a little gun. It would be fun to shoot the other two and the only one. Oh, we do everything alike, we look alike, we dress alike. 
like, we want the like, we talk the like, and what is more, we hate each other very much. We hate our folks, we're sick of jokes, and what an art it is to tell us apart. We eat the same kind of vittles, we drink the same kind of bottles, we sit in the same kind of high chair, high chair, high chair. the results of our latest college poll. This week, we went to the University of Washington and asked the students the following question. Can a woman find true happiness with a man half her age? 39 said yes, 26 said no, and 17,000 said not if she's under 20. Yeah. 